so far, we have discussed negation, conjunction, disjunction, conditional, and biconditional. Negation, if we have a statement P and we want to negate that, we use this form. So we can have not P or it is not true that P. These are the common English translations. For conjunction, this symbol here would take to mean and. So this means P and Q, or you could also have P but Q. For or, we use this symbol here, that is for disjunction. Disjunction meaning or, we have this symbol. For the conditional statement, we have the if P, then Q statement. We also have P is sufficient for Q, and we also have Q is necessary for P. All of this means conditional statement. For biconditional statement, this symbol here is if and only if, or you have necessary and sufficient. So now let's consider how we could represent symbolic statements into words. Now let P represent the statement, she is wealthy. And Q is the statement, she is happy. So if we are going to write this symbolic statement here, not and then parentheses P and Q, if we're going to write this in words, this will be written as, it is not true that she is wealthy and happy. So again, P is wealthy, Q is happy, and then we have here a negation. So that is, it is not true that she is wealthy and happy. Another one, what about P and Q? So meaning you negate P, you negate she is wealthy. So you have and, and then the Q statement, she is happy. So she is not wealthy and she is happy. What about not P and then this is or Q? So not means you negate it. So we have P, she is wealthy or happy, and then you negate that. You just have to say, she is neither wealthy nor happy. So literally, it is not true that she is either wealthy or happy. Now, for instance, we see a symbolic statement like this, wherein we have a parenthesis and a conditional statement, or like we have a more complicated symbolic statement here. So if we have something like this, the one in the parenthesis is grouped together. Like in this case, the Q and not P is grouped together. And the English translation for this one is, this would be my antecedent, if Q and not P, then not R. In this example here, this expression is grouped together. The statements here is grouped together. And then if you write this in English translation, you would say Q and if not P, then not R. Now, one thing that you should notice is the comma here. See the comma? So, Notice that when we translate symbolic statement into English, the simple statements in parentheses appear on the same side of the comma. For instance here, this one is grouped together. So they all appear together on that side of the comma. Here, this one is grouped together. So meaning to say, if there's a parenthesis, just signal that there's a parenthesis, you put a comma. So you say, if Q and not P, comma, then not R. And then here you say Q and then comma and then you say this, if not P then not R. The comma is what would separate the two groups. So now if we write symbolic statements in words with this example here, we have a comma and we want to write this in words. Now let P be the statement, a student misses lecture. Q is the statement, a student studies. R is the statement, a student fails. 
if we write this symbolic statement in words, we have, again, Q, student studies. So we have if a student studies, this symbol here means and, and the student not, so be, this one is not P, so not, so negate a student misses a lecture. So a student not miss a lecture, then comma, then, then you negate R, then a student will not fail. Okay, so or you say as if a student studies and does not miss lecture, comma, because there's a, a parenthesis here, then the student does not fail. Now for this symbolic statement here, using the same representation. So if we're going to write this in words, we have a student studies, then comma, comma, because there's a parenthesis here, and is for this. And then you say, if the student does not miss a lecture, you negate, you negate P, a student does not miss a lecture. Then the student, and then you negate R, then the student does not fail. Now, if we see some symbolic statements that has one or more connectives and no parentheses are involved, we would use the level of dominance of connectives to group the statement. The statements that come before and after the most dominant connective should be grouped. Dominance of connectives used in logic, in symbolic logic, is defined in the following order. Negation is actually the least dominant. For conjunction and disjunction, they actually have the same level of dominance. If they have the same level, so it doesn't matter which one to group first. But the most dominant will be the conditional and the biconditional connectives. So for instance, if you see this statement here, you have two connectives here, actually three, we have the negation. And you see that we don't know what, how, what to group here. The most dominant connective here is the conditional statement. So this one in red, that's the most dominant. So therefore, if you clarify this one, it is the same as grouping this. So you have to group these statements. So the same thing here also. The most dominant here would be this conditional statement. So therefore, these statements here will be grouped together. Now, what about if we have the biconditional and conditional? For biconditional and conditional, the biconditional statement is more dominant than the conditional statement. The most dominant is the biconditional statement. So therefore, you group this together because they're on this same side. So this P, if and only if Q, then R is the same as P, if and only if, and then you group this Q, then R. Here, again, this is the most biconditional, so I would group this, so you would group this together. So you have P, then Q, grouped together, and then if and only if. Here, the conditional statement here is the most dominant, so therefore you group these statements here, and you group these statements. Now, if we have P and Q or R, they are of the same level of dominance. So the meaning here is a bit ambiguous. The grouping here must be given with a statement. So if you're given something like this, the grouping must be given with a statement to determine whether you mean P and Q or R, or you mean a disjunction. So either you mean a this one is a conjunction, or you mean a disjunction. If it does not have any parentheses, then it is ambiguous. Let P, Q, and R represent the following simple statements. P represent the statement, I fail the course. And Q is the statement, I study hard. R is the statement, I pass the final. Write each compound statement in symbolic form. For letter A, I do not fail the course if and only if I studied hard and I pass. 
notice that we have several connectives used here. For the first statement, I do not fail the course. I do not fail the course means negation of P. So therefore we have not P. And then we have if and only if. In the level of dominance, if and only if is the most dominant. So therefore this is in red. Think of this as a red connective. The simple statements after this will be grouped together. So I would group together if I study hard and I pass the final. So that is Q and R. Now for letter B, you have I do not fail the course. I do not fail the course, that is the negation of P. And then if and only if, this is the most dominant. So let's read everything together. I do not fail the course if and only if I study hard and I pass the final. So in this case here, we actually have a comma. So that means that we would have to group this together because of the comma. So this is one grouped. So I have, I do not fail the course if and only if I study hard. So this is the first group. And then comma, and then and is a conjunction, and this is the notation. I pass the final. I pass the final is R. So again, you also have to watch out the comma. Comma is used to denote a parenthesis. If it does not have a comma, then that means that you have to use the level of dominance of the connectives in order for you to know which one to group together. In this example here, we have, I do not fail the course if and only if I study hard and I pass the final. Notice that we don't have any comma here. We don't know which one to group together. So therefore, we will just have to use the level of dominance of connectives so we know which statements will be grouped together. So for the statement, I do not fail the course, we mean not P. And then we have this if and only if, and that is the most dominant. I study hard and I pass the final. Study hard is Q and pass the final is R. And then and is represented as that is a conjunction. Therefore, to write this symbolically, we just have not P because we don't have a comma in the statement. We have not P if and only if, and then we group together Q and R. I do not fail the course, that is not P, if and only if, I study hard and I pass the final. But since the most dominant connective appears is this one, the symbolic form with parentheses is this.